Beth Reed. Immediate past district director, Ivory Quinn. I'd also like to recognize our division directors, starting with the Northwest Division Director, Sean Siegel. <laughs> Southwest Division Director, Carol Henry. <laughs> Northeast Division Director, Barbara Beckley. Division Director Jerry Phillips. <laughs> and West Division Director Noel Dene. <laughs> well, our current area directors, would you please stand and be recognized? <laughs> Evaluation to compete, obviously they need someone to evaluate. Um, 
please help me welcome to the lectern Belinda Fultz, who will be speaking on her speech, Do You Own It? Belinda Fultz.
humbly as I strive to get better, and I challenge my courage every single time I get up to speak. As Toastmasters, we are given an opportunity to own it every single meeting and at every single conference. Do you own it? Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right, thank you for owning it. And if you don't own it, then now is the time to go ahead and start to own it. If you own your successes and your failures and get up and strive to be better, you never know how your life will change. once they are seated in the room. When that five minutes is over, escort our first contestant back to this room. We'll also ask our timers in this room to begin timing once the contestants have left. Timers, please signal me when their five minutes are up. So while the speech evaluation contestants complete their evaluations, we'll get to know our target speaker. Please help me welcome back to the lectern, Melinda Fultz. Too, so that you can build up other people. 
So I think throughout my life, I've had the opportunity to be with people that are all about love. And so because of that, I'm able to try my own love. So, how do you find Toastmasters fits in with that goal and that, that life philosophy? It fits in perfectly from every part of the meeting because we have to get better. We give speeches so we get better, but at the same time, we provide feedback to other people so that they can get better. We tell them things that we might notice, but they might not notice at all. And that helps them to get better in their journey. So it's it's definitely a part of that cycle because in every single meeting we have the opportunity to build somebody, but we also have the opportunity to build as well. So in your time, I still can't believe you've been Toastmaster for less than a year. You got up here and this way. But in your time in Toastmasters, what have you found to be your favorite aspect, either of the meetings or the work that you as a whole? Um, I think that my favorite aspect of Toastmasters is actually the fact that we do build each other. It is one environment that I can go to and receive constructive criticism and not feel bad about it. It is the one environment that I can go into and know that someone is going to tell me how to get better because they're concerned about me. Not everybody does that. People can tell you occasionally how to get better without coming from a place of concern or care or affection. I just tell you, oh, please. That outfit, that does not work for you. <laughs> you can say that to you. Whereas, as the children, I was like, oh, well, you know what? That outfit is very lovely and nice, but here's what you're going to do to improve this outfit. <laughs> so, that's like a different thing. Have you been able to bring any of that postmaster's experience to the workplace? Like you gave us a little bit of some insight into some experience you had in the workplace and presenting and that sort of thing. Yes. I will say that Toastmasters has helped me build my confidence back like that. Um, and so I'm able to actually speak to various people. I don't shy away from speaking my opinion at work. And I think for me that is very helpful. I noticed that right away that in a meeting I would actually talk. I would be terrified of talking. One time I actually was in a meeting and I spoke so quickly that the person said to me, you know what? I didn't even have time to pick up my pencil. Can you repeat that? <laughs> <laughs> so have you considered any officer roles? I'm currently a sergeant at arms at my club. <laughs> Body, the Ghostmaster spirit. I definitely appreciate what you're saying about the constructive criticism. I'm sure that's something we all appreciate in our clubs and in our meetings. And in honor of you speaking today, and as a sign of gratitude, because it's such an amazing I'd like to present you with a certificate and a gift.
already here for our speech evaluation contestants. There will be one minute of silence between each contestant. Timekeepers, when I advise you to do so, please signal me with the green light when one minute is up. After all the contestants have spoken, the judges will be given as much time as they need to complete their ballots. So without further ado, I'd like to begin the contest with Cassie Moore, speech evaluation contestant number one. Speech evaluation contestant number one, Cassie Moore.
Matthew Fox, speech evaluation contestant number two. Speech evaluation contestant number two, Matthew Fox.
Amy Samaras, speech evaluation contestant number three. Speech evaluation contestant number three, Amy Samaras.
Cindy McMurray, speech evaluation contestant number four. Speech evaluation contestant number four, Wendy McMurray.
Michael Scampini, speech evaluation contestant number five. Speech evaluation contestant number five, Michael Scampini. Madam Toastmaster, contest chair, fellow Toastmasters, distinguished Toastmasters, guests, and especially the one that can truly show anyone how to own it, Belinda. <laughs> Belinda, I really enjoyed your speech, and before I tell you what I enjoyed the most, I'd like to share with you three strengths I saw in your speech. I'll then go over three growth opportunities and some tools you can use to improve going forward, and then I'll tell you what I really enjoyed the most. So starting with your strengths, strength number one was your attire. An attire is important because it gives the audience a good impression, and it also adds value to your message. And with your outfit, you dress to impress. And for that, I say respect. Far away, high five. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, storytelling. And storytelling is important because it, and it's powerful because people remember stories. And when you told your story about the sorority and then the speech you gave at your work, it gave you instant credibility. You had a great balance of narration, dialogue. When you talked with the sorority sister that said, I love your lipstick, I love the color red. You strong vocal variety, you really brought that story to life. Very, very powerful, great job. And number three was your body language. And another thing that gives a good impression is your body language. You had strong presence, strong confidence. Your gestures supported your message, especially when you clenched your fist and you said, get it lucky, I like that. And your eye contact was strong. You connected, you engaged with the entire body. Very, very powerful. Now I'd like to move on to the three growth opportunities and some tools you can use to improve going forward. And number one is your open. I thought your open was strong. If you'd like to take it to the next level, consider asking a you-focused question. Ask the audience, have you ever experienced a failure? <coughs> Let them sink that question in, and then move into your stories, and then at the end, show them the answers to that question. When you use a you-focused question, you speak to the masses and you address the individual. They will feel like they're talking, you were talking directly to them. Number two is movement. And movement's important because it also supports your message and to move with purpose. And consider you had two different stories. You could maybe stage right for your first story and then move to the left for your second story and then bring it home in the middle and really give us that call to action. Use the movement to support your stories and your message and your transition. Number three is to pause. There's power in the pause. The pause allows us to laugh, it allows us to feel, and it allows us to think. Use pauses as you, as you get that laugh and that humor, and as you ask that you focus question I suggested in the beginning, use that pause, let us answer that question in our own minds. Let us go inside of ourselves, and then bring us into your world. And you can also use the pause when you said, you asked, do you own it? Pause very long, and let us feel that. Because when you speak, people listen, but they really listen when you pause, so use that pause. So all in all, I really enjoyed your speech and the call to action and you know telling us to own it, very, very powerful, really loved it. So continue to use that strong attire, storytelling, and body language, and then work on strengthening your open using that movement and then the pause. And the next time you speak, you will be nowhere near an auctioneer. <laughs> while the judges complete their ballots and have them collected by the ballot counters.
call the judges are from getting their ballots. Madam Toastmaster, we have all the ballots.
representing <laughs> Fox Valley Toastmasters Area 1. <laughs> and, I, sorry, your highest educational level, please? Distinguished Toastmaster. <laughs> I've been in Toastmasters now for nine years. So, in your profile, you noted that you are DTM, but you're also a best-selling author. What, it, again, <laughs> what was your book and what's it about? Can you tell us about that? Well, interestingly, it ties into the speech today that Belinda gave about confidence, but it's called From Zero to Sales Hero, How to Double Your Sales Income in 90 Days. So, I wrote a somewhat of a memoir of my 23 plus years in sales, lessons learned, and I, it was my way of giving back to everyone that taught and mentored me over my many years of learnable moments. Well, thank you for your participation today. Please accept this certificate. Thank you. And you're very
very much, everyone, for being so gracious and hospitable to me on my first time here at the lectern. I'd like to call up our district trio, Iqbal Acha, Tiffany Howard, and Stella Lawrence. start off just by giving a round of applause for our contest Toastmaster, Keisha Moni And as you, and as you have done so graciously with the other five contestants on behalf of the district, we would like to grant you the certificate of appreciation. Waiting for the final answers and the final winners, which will be announced in just a few moments. I would like to make sure that we have a few announcements from both our program quality director and our club growth director. So I will pass the microphone first to our program quality director to share with you some tidbits in her area of expertise. Look at this room. Let's give a huge round of applause to all of you that have up this morning. that I wanted to say was, Keisha, where did you end up? Is she over there? There she is. You don't understand how difficult it is when you're a contestant to be a Toastmaster. So we, we have a challenge every year that those that win the contest to come back up here and understand the role, and it's difficult. And Keisha did a flawless job. She has never served as a Toastmaster in any capacity for a contest, and she did amazing today. So give her a round of applause. last month and a half through all the contests and all the areas and divisions, the one thing I heard the most from contestants that are now serving as area directors, saying they didn't understand how difficult it was to put on a contest, all the pieces that go involved in it, they would just show up and it happened. So for those that are behind the scenes, that are making everything happen, that go from a contestant to a functioning, thank you for taking on that ability and learning your leadership from that because it's a great quality. And I encourage those are, who are contestants to do that in the future and see that leadership path. So thank you to everyone. So many behind the scenes that make this conference happen, that is making everything. You have people out in the halls constantly with registration. You have individuals that are running around to make sure that everything that you are looking for to get out of this conference is taken care of. So thank you for all our volunteers, everyone who showed up, and we encourage you to stick around throughout the day and see each and every event and what it has to offer. So thank you for showing up, and I look forward to seeing more faces throughout the conference today and tomorrow. Thank you. Wow, it's a great pleasure to be in front of you today. Such a great audience attendance. I just am just moved by everyone being here. So congratulations to getting here safely and soundly, and hopefully the weather will get better. But <laughs> it has been a great, great, great contest. I thought that everyone did a superb job, and it, I cannot believe the detail. Have you noticed how much detail has gone on? to this conference being our last one. I guess the last show always changed, turns out to be the best. So this has been incredible. I really love the purple ribbons and the purple runners and the purple theme that's throughout and reflects our war and pride so beautifully. What a great message that everybody has put together here today. So I am impressed with everyone and everyone I see and I'm delighted to be part of this. Thank you. How many of you like the color purple? I'm so happy. 
Barbara, I need those pants. Those happy pants is what I'm going to need. Outstanding. I see that we have a few individuals that have come. Good to go. All right. So, Stub, I'll have you come back on stage. I do want to acknowledge one other individual that has helped this contest run smoothly, and that is uh, Brian Shields. Uh, so, Brian, who has uh, been our contest chair, please do come to the stage for me. And on behalf of the district, we know how challenging it can be to run a contest the way that Tiffany was saying. So we'd like to give you this little certificate and card of appreciation. You'll find the gift inside. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, in my hand, I have the winners of the speech evaluation contest. I'm a no drama kind of guy, so I don't make you wait until the end.
Well, it's a wonderful, wonderful contest. Congratulations to everyone who participated because that's the big thing about Toastmasters. It gives us the opportunity to learn and practice skills. And it's not about winning, even though we all love to win, but it's really about the experience and what we learn from the experience. So thank you so much for participating today. At 11.30, we're going to have the Launch and Distinguished Club Awards, and that is going to be held in this room. Is that correct? It's in this room. And what we need to remind everyone is that if you go out and purchase food, you cannot bring it into this room or the other exhibit hall or the other educational session rooms. Just find a place out in the lobby area to eat. Uh, but if you have a ticket, please come back for that. We have a little bit of time because we're actually, what an efficient, dazzling conference. We are ahead of schedule. And that's historical enough. And this is, this is a historical moment being the last fall conference. And, and yet that's not the whole history of the conference. So I probably have enough time to read the whole history of it. <laughs> but that wouldn't dazzle you, that would frazzle you. So I'm not going to do that. I am going to share one tidbit that I found out reading this, and this is available actually on the B30 Toastmasters website, so you can actually follow along if you have your phones or look this up later. I know that the first thing I learned when I was in Toastmasters regarding the history of Toastmasters is that it was started by Ralph Smedley, and I always heard about the state of California where Barbara Clazan is from. Course. And as much as we love California, and as much as it's close to Houston, and Houston and the Dodgers just were in the World Series, not our Cubs, we want to bring the focus here where the real good things are. Because I found out that the state of Illinois was the place where the Toastmasters concept originated. Not only was it the home of our founder, Ralph Smedley, it also was where the first Toastmasters Club was started. Ralph Smedley was the educational director of the Bloomington YMCA, and he recognized that young men needed help with the communication and leadership skills that would help them to succeed in life, how to plan programs, conduct meetings, and how to work with committees. And so he had the idea of a social club. And the clubs met weekly and practiced speeches, debates, and some kind of work in chairmanship. And that work, that meeting, was actually the first Toastmasters club. And it was formed in Bloomington, Illinois, in 1905. There were a couple other clubs that were formed in Illinois. But we don't talk about them today because, unfortunately, the people that came after Ralph didn't share his enthusiasm for the project. And so the Toastmasters program and those clubs died shortly after Ralph moved down. And then when he moved to California, then he was able to resurrect it and it was the official launch of Toastmasters. So the two important lessons or points that had come out of that are that, A, Illinois was first, <laughs> but also, it's important to think about the people that are going to follow behind us. We heard today from Belinda, who was just a few months into this program, and look at what she shared with all of us. And think about the people that in your clubs are the newer members who haven't yet taken on a leadership we experienced Toastmasters need to know that that experience cannot die like that Bloomington Club died years ago from a lack of preparation for successors. We want this district and Toastmasters in general to continue to grow, to remain dynamic. And the way to do that is to make sure that we continue to welcome people in, support them, and guide them, and continue to work ourselves as examples of what this program can be and what it can do for all of us. And so, I'm going back to a couple of the points I started this morning when most of you were stuck in traffic or hoping that the rain was going to stop. 
because my lessons were spelling out the word dazzle. And the first one was to make sure that you determine, be determined, what you're going to learn here in these next two days. And who are you going to meet here? Because this is an opportunity for you to gain some knowledge and also to share your knowledge with others. And the A in Dazzle was the daily double of advice and advice. Seek out the advice of someone who is further down the trail, the pathway, than you are. And advise somebody who's newer, something that you can encourage them so that they leave this conference with something that they can now put into their Toastmasters tool. Advise and advise. I will spell out the rest of the word dazzle as the sessions go on, so keep coming back because it's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> it's now 11.19, and before we break, I just want to also recognize one person who maybe we're not thinking about right now, but he has been integral to this event, because we've heard some fabulous music that really pumped us up. Everyone that's come up here actually has microphones that work, that don't squeal. No feedback so far. And that doesn't happen by mistake. That happens because of Ruben Augusto. Yeah. Now, before Ruben silences me because I'm going on too long, I'm going to just give you 10 minutes back of your day so that you can make a pit stop or visit the exhibit hall, do what you want to do, give some advice and advise others. And then for those of you coming to the luncheon, we'll see you at 11.30.